Hi everyone, and welcome back to my houseplant vlog where I talk about the plants in my Manhattan apartment and all manner of tangentially related subjects. So today I wanted to shift gears a little bit and talk about the plant community on YouTube, something that new plant enthusiasts generally have to navigate. So this video will be a sort of ethnography of plant YouTube, by which I mean I'm just going to talk about my favorite plant YouTubers and the role that they've played in my houseplant journey. So YouTube is obviously kind of a wild place. On this platform, content can reach an enormous audience without having to go through the gatekeepers that control traditionally produced media. For example, as a pianist, I can log on here and watch some of the greatest performances of the last century by the likes of Sviatoslav Richter or Martha Argerich. On the other hand, I can watch certain nameless pianists rack up tens of millions of views with playing that, to put it lightly, would not get them into a second tier grad school. And I mean, good for them. I'm not here to hate on anyone's YouTube channel. But YouTube's elevation of complete amateurs has an interesting effect when it comes to the more domestic sphere of things like cooking, design, and of course houseplants. These endeavors have traditionally been undertaken by women as unpaid domestic labor within the household, even as the professional tiers of these fields have been traditionally dominated by men. YouTube has allowed many of these essentially normal housewives to gain an enormous amount of visibility and recognition. In the case of cooking YouTube, for instance, while many of the platform's biggest stars have indeed been men, quite a few women, many of whom are from developing countries, have gained access to a wide platform to share their, what basically amounts to traditional knowledge, and in some cases gain a significant income therefrom. And so in Plant YouTube, we see the cross-pollination of indoor landscaping professionals, amateur hobbyists and housewife types, and a new creature of the contemporary era, the plant influencer. Landscaping professionals on YouTube are probably best represented by the Swedish plant guys, whose videos are informed by their 20 years in the tropical plant biz in Skåne County, Sweden. I mean, they're called the Swedish plant guys, but pretty much all of their videos just feature this one dude. And the fact that I don't know his name pretty much tells you all you need to know about their unflashy, no-nonsense approach. I don't know, somehow in my mind his name is Lars, so I'll call him that. These videos are extraordinarily informative and painstakingly thorough. Not only that, but they're organized with a stunning level of clarity and meticulously labeled timestamps. A typical video of theirs will involve, for example, a list of common ailments that a particular houseplant might suffer from, complete with instructions on how to treat it and a thorough explanation of the causes. They are absolutely the first source I head to when one of my guys isn't doing so well. I do sometimes marvel at how this channel isn't more popular than it already is, but to be fair, their style of presentation really isn't geared to hook people in. And while I find Lars to be the epitome of charm, I can see how not everyone would find him to be the most suave presenter. His personality occasionally dips into the territory of dry, humorless European, I mean, you know the type, and can sometimes approach that peculiar kind of naive camp that occurs with a particular brand of awkward, nerdy, on-camera personality. Thrown quite a far away from the volcano, the city of Pompeii, for instance, was uh, totally buried in pumice. One thing that I love about Lars is how his impeccable English is occasionally punctuated by his extremely southern Swedish pronunciation of Latin botanical names. Like, he'll be like, the fiddly fig or ficus durata. So we obviously can't talk about plant YouTube without talking about Plant Arena. Plant Arena is a YouTube channel that is hosted by the lovely Amanda Switzer. And people often refer to Amanda herself as Plant Arena, even though Plant Arena is the name of the channel and the associated plant shipping business. It's sort of a Frankenstein versus Frankenstein's monster kind of situation. Amanda from Plant Arena has obvious appeal. She certainly has a very influencer kind of aesthetic, and she definitely has a big presence on Instagram. But this is not a chuggy millennial cottagecore sort of aesthetic or anything like that. It's more of a free love, hippie, Jodie Foster sort of vibe. Combine that with her quirky, at times hilarious personality that almost has a tinge of Lucy and Ethel to it. And it's no surprise why she's so beloved by the community. I have on many occasions put her videos on autoplay during my morning iced Americana routine. Plus I'm thirsty, but 
If you drink a margarita and you're thirsty, that's you probably should drink a glass of water first. People do sometimes say that her videos are more entertainment than they are informative or useful, but I honestly find them to be quite useful and I'll often head to them for specific care advice for various ailing plants of mine. I think that what really makes her unique, however, on this platform is her willingness to talk very frankly and very casually about plants that she has killed or is in the process of killing, which is a great source of practical information, but also extremely encouraging at times. My favorite thing about Amanda, honestly, is the love that she has when she talks about plants. She even expresses reticence when she does something as innocuous as pruning a dead leaf. But she does make clear, on the other hand, that houseplants do die, and that sometimes you have to make a tough decision to throw out a plant that might have pests or is causing an infestation. And honestly, her words really helped me persevere through some of my most disheartening moments as a plant dad. Plant Arena is an actual plant shipping company, but it's unclear what Amanda's involvement is in it, besides being the face of its social media wing. And her videos are very much from the perspective of an amateur houseplant enthusiast, albeit one with two giant houses full of plants. Plant Arena Holdings LLC is evidently run by one Lauren Scharf, who does actually appear on the channel every once in a while. But I assume it's that person that's like, running the warehouse. Loki, it's kind of wild looking at their careers page. They're looking for a bunch of warehouse employees to do packaging and stuff and are like, college degree preferred. Is that where the labor market really is in 2022? I mean, now that I think about it, it's honestly kind of tempting to quit my job and move to Florida and package plants for Plant Arena. Now finally, the moment you've all been waiting for, we have to talk about the queen of plant YouTube, Summer Rain Oaks. What is there to say about Summer other than that she is perfection? Her New York City apartment filled with over a thousand plants was a major inspiration to me during the darkest days of the pandemic when I was unemployed and living with my parents, hoping to one day move to a place of my own in Manhattan. She began as an amateur, but with her rise to YouTube and social media stardom, developed a deep and institutional knowledge about plant care and takes her commitment to providing useful, detailed, and accurate information as seriously as she does the high production quality of her videos. She also just has the bone structure to rack up those kinds of views. But what really sets Summer apart is her commitment to focusing on the actual people who love and collect plants. Her houseplant home tours feature some really interesting and often very moving stories. The best one is with Nia from The Bloom Journey, who talks about how plants became important to her after experiencing homelessness. And by the way, Nia is the best plant influencer on Instagram. You should totally follow her. I'll leave the link in the description. Plant Instagram tends to be more diverse and a lot more international than plant YouTube being less dependent on the English language for its content. And you know, I've mentioned this before in this vlog, but somehow whenever an extremely impressive plant photo shows up on my Instagram feed, there's always a good chance that the caption is in Korean, Japanese, or else German or Scandinavian. There's something about the Northern latitudes, I guess, that attracts extremely dedicated and competent tropical plant enthusiasts. If we're being completely honest, my plants aren't really ready for Instagram, which I mean, I can relate. As much as YouTube has its own stars, there are also a ton of creators out there that occasionally wander into the field for a moment or dabble in the subject. The YouTuber Halise, for example, makes videos on a ton of different subjects, including like a scripted weekly series about office culture, but her videos on semi-hydroponics with Lekka were absolutely instrumental in getting me to move in that direction. I'm really hoping these guys survive, so stay tuned. Influencer Bretman Rock, if you know or care whom that is, recently regaled his YouTube followers with a extravagant tour of his houseplants, evidently a pandemic era hobby. And this was reviewed by plant YouTuber, Nick Alexander, who tends to do a lot of plant reaction content to plant TikToks and stuff like that. I promise I will not make a video about plant TikTok. So those are my thoughts on plant YouTube. Let me know in the comments whom your favorite plant YouTubers are. And stay tuned for more houseplant related topics. As always, thank you for watching and don't overboard your houseplants.